Hey y'all, Chip and Joanna Gaines here in Waco, Texas. And this is Varieties Uncovered. I think there is something about us coming to the table really fascinated by people's stories and then figuring out how do you tell the story on this platform in a unique way. And I think for us, we've always loved the idea of storytelling and we love when people are doing the thing that yeah. they were built to do and they do it so passionately. There so any one of our storytellers on the network, we could sit with them for 10 minutes and Chip and I are like freaking out. We're so inspired by yeah. them. And then from there, we figure out how do we capture their life? How do we capture it as what they're doing? and you know, call it a show, whatever you want to call it. But I think no matter what, when you look on the network and you see these shows, hopefully the same thing that you see, whether it's a home show or a cooking show, that you see that same thread of just people doing what it is they were meant to do. They're passionate about it. And hopefully when people watch that, they're inspired to go find the thing that they're then meant to do. Waco's home for us. We both went to college here. I moved here my, what, junior year in high school. High school yeah. Chip moved here during college. We didn't know each other in college, but after we graduated, we both found jobs here locally. Chip, all of his uh, 10 businesses that he tried to start. Some people would say I, I was an entrepreneur and that I had started all these amazing businesses, or you could say jobs. that I had jobs. Well, they the jobs were hard jobs. Were hard I mean, jobs. lawn care business, a wash and fold business, a landscape company. All These the are hard working fire jobs. Firecracker business. Firecracker stand. I mean, you can see why I fell in love with the guy. Fire, firecracker jobs, <laughs> lawn care jobs. But the one thing we had in common. jobs. One thing we had in common when we both met was just our love for this town and this community. I think I watch most of the shows on the network as they're being dropped or as they're being piloted. And so that's just so fun to see these stories come to life in that way. So I We've would got say- a couple of friends named Brittany and Annie that are on the network and I can't stop watching those two. Well, they're hilarious. Yeah, dear friends. I keep moving and she keeps moving away. And I'm like, I showered, I have really good smelling stuff yeah. on. Oh. When Chip and I were first doing Fixer, we were really running a design and construction business. We had some retail on the side, and I think with that, then you introduce production to that life, and it becomes like two full-time jobs. What was I gonna say? <laughs> okay, here we go. And so we understand that push and pull and how a lot of times production may not understand the business side of your business. And so it's like, how do we marry these two worlds without the storytellers or the talent on our network feeling like, oh my gosh, my life just got so much busier. This is hard. For us, it's just making sure they feel comfortable that production fits into their life, but it's not adding a huge burden to that schedule. And so for us, it's just important that the talent doesn't feel by the end of these series, like I, I can't ever do that again. So hopefully it feels different for them. And we really did set out to build an ecosystem to where the talent and the family and the business behind the story that we're trying to tell really leads and the production company kind of falls in a secondary position in that way. But it's just like for Joe and I both, it's just like we're both small business people. That's really who we are. And even though our small business has gotten a little bit bigger, it still feels like a small business. On the flip side of that, you know, then you add that element of like fame and people recognizing you and you just, you kind of feel like you're sort of stuck between two realities. You know, are we these famous people that do these certain things or are we really these normal people that live next door to the same people we lived next door to 10 years ago and are still walking across the street to watch, you know, television at their house? So it, it's been challenging. It's been really interesting, the, uh, that experience. And I have one word for you, Chip. How'd I do? Job well done. Woo! Joe, just answer the question directly and honestly. <laughs> do we have a television set? <laughs> yes, she asked no? you. <laughs> We're at the farm. The renovation is done. The reason we don't ever know how to answer this question 
is because here at the office, we have a television set. Right there. And so people take selfies in front of the office and are like, I thought you said you didn't have a television. <laughs> so we have access to televisions, but we don't have a television at our primary residence at the farm. So I'm trying to be legally and technically <laughs> accurate. This is wow. not a deposition. I Nobody feel, cares. I feel wildly insecure about answering this question. No, nobody cares. Reason. We do think it's quite ironic that we have a network. There you go. But again, and we go to our neighbors you, for television. Or our, our little laptop works great. Listen, our neighbors come to us for fresh milk. We go to our neighbors for television programming. I think it's a fair barter. We're nervous. No. We're nervous about how, <laughs> no. what type of effect, because all four of our kids prior to crew are fit. I would say we're brought up in a pretty normal well, environment. They were normal, but then once Fixer happened, I don't think, they were so young. I think that's what's great about crew because at the time Fixer was like kind of sometimes all encompassing. I, sometimes I wonder, should we ship this kid Maybe off to Kim Kardashian? Stop. So that he can have a chance to really to. be inundated and understand this environment. Crew doesn't know the difference. Crew is a four-year-old kid and all he cares about right now is fishing and dinosaurs. So he I think Crew's fine. Do you want mama to do a change order? I did, mama, I did a thing. He said, mom, let her do her thing. Oh, right? Yeah. Okay, mom, sounds good. High five. Yeah. Yes, um, I listened to it the day it came out. That's true, the she night. She actually sent me some sweats and Ooh. her vinyl. So I was very excited. The girls fought over it, so we kind of rotate. We've got the hoodie and the sweats, and it's like every other week. All I'm saying is, yes, I love her new album, Midnight. I think she is a genius. And the sweats. And the sweats, but just her storytelling. There, there's something there. I'm just like, man, she's she's amazing at what she does. So even though you haven't broken up with anybody in the last six months, you can still <laughs> relate to her, her songs. Yeah, because I feel lyrics. like her music moves and evolves with her, which is always is so fascinating when you see these artists. They're open and they're vulnerable to what it is they're currently going through, and then that's reflected in their music, so but in such midnight, a creative What is the midnight album? Way. What things are taking place? She's more vulnerable. vulnerable. She's more vulnerable, she and is. you can almost feel what it is that she's going through, but she tells it in these unique stories where you're trying to figure out, okay, is it this or that? And I just think she's amazing. I think Antihero is, I saw, <laughs> sorry, I'm a fan. It's me, hi, I'm the problem. I would say the first time I heard Sweet Nothing, I cried. I was just like, it's just, I, I love that What's song. What's it about? I personally made it about several things. I don't know what it's about for Taylor, but it really did speak to me. Oh, sweet. Was it, were they any of those three things me? You, oh and gosh. then in some ways I could see the kids. It's just, it's just, it's sweet. And then Little Crew, all, all these things. It really spoke to me.